Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena, episode 108 for Wednesday, July 27th, 2016. Processing photos with neural networks. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell. I step away from Android news for one week as I enjoyed my vacation in the mountains. And when I returned, I guess I expected people to still be going gaga over Pokemon Go. But no, now people are all googly-eyed over a new app that uses neural networks in the cloud to mimic art styles and apply those styles to photos. And so I knew I had to cover that app, which I will in a second, but it got me thinking there must be other apps that do that sort of thing. And what do you know? There are, thankfully. In fact, I've got three apps that tap into the crazy world of neural networks and artificial intelligence, all in an effort to make your smartphone pictures look like works of art. Let's check them all out in this week's roundup. So the app that inspired this week's theme arrives on the Android scene after an explosive release on iOS last month, and then followed by a brief beta of around one week on Android. Prisma is a photo art app that utilizes something we talk about a lot these days on Twit, artificial intelligence and neural networks. First, Prisma is not a photo editing app. You won't find the traditional endless supply of photo editing tools here, but you do get a few from the start. You can either snap a photo or import an existing photo from your gallery. So let's first do that. And once imported, you can rotate and crop to taste. And that does it for actual photo editing functions. Now the part that Prisma is known for. Across the bottom of the screen, as you see, is a long carousel of artistic filters. Yes, we've heard that line a million times before, but these filters actually mimic the art style of famous artists the world over. You'll recognize many of these immediately. Select the filter to apply that to the picture that you've chosen from your gallery and send it off. That image is then uploaded to Prisma's servers where their neural network processes the image in the style of that filter and eventually, usually somewhere around 15 seconds or so later, sends it back to you with the changes made. Those neural networks have been trained to detect patterns in those original art styles, and it applies those lessons to how it treats the photos, creating incredibly realistic-looking works of art. It's actually pretty astounding how good it is at times. Do be aware that there are a ton of Prisma copycats in the Play Store, so do yourself a favor and search for Prisma by typing in Neural Prisma, one word, when you go to search. Find it now in the Play Store for free. This next app takes a bit of what you just saw, but opens the doors to let your own imagination run wild. Picasso allows you to be in control of what style of art to apply to your own images. The interface, I will admit, leaves a little to be desired, but the end result is really where it's all at. So here's what you do to get things started. First, we'll tap on paint, which reveals three distinct steps that you'll have to follow. First, with picture, I'll jump into my own gallery of pictures to find one that I want to work with. And then next, I'll tap on style. Now, as you can see, I'm presented with eight distinct art styles. Many look like they could have been painted with oil paints. There's a few more hardline styles, and that rock formation style down below is one of my favorites. Any of these styles can be applied to the image that I've loaded. Or I can choose custom. And there, I'm going to go with my own style. With no image search functionality built in, you might want to take some time to find some cool art styles and save those images to your device prior to using Picasso. That'll give you more custom options to pick from. But once you have them all picked, you just tap paint. Both the image and style image are then uploaded to Picasso's servers for its own brand of neural network processing. It's added to the queue, and from there, you wait. I had to wait up to 10 minutes to get the results, so it does take a while. You set it, 
go grab a cup of coffee or something and return in a bit. When you do, you should have a unique photo that combines the two images in cool ways. Picasso allows you to be a bit more creative when it comes to processing your images in the style of other artists. So check it out and see what you can come up with. Find Picasso with a Z in the Play Store for free. Last year, Google dropped a psychedelic bombshell called Deep Dream, which was a way to showcase how Google's neural networks were able to take a look at a series of images and find patterns within those images that match up to source material. For example, eyeballs or bananas. The results were surreal, to say the least. Google open-sourced Deep Dream, allowing anyone to get creative with the code and mash images of all types together, and out of that came an app called Dreamify. Now, warning in advance, the gallery section of this app is filled with user submissions, and some of them can and likely will be not safe for work, so keep that in mind. With that out of the way, Let's dreamify an image. First step is to select the preset filter. Those example images kind of give you a sense of what you can expect. Some of these are influenced heavily by images of eyeballs, like I said, or in other examples, dog faces. Others have more of a mosaic quality to them, but I'm gonna go ahead and choose the dog faces one. It's called Dogify. I can then go into Customize to alter a few of the settings that will increase or decrease the complexity of the final image. That Shared and Gallery button is for if you want the public to be able to see your image. I'm going to go ahead and set that to Off. Now down below, I can either snap a picture or choose from my personal gallery. And once I do that, the image is then immediately uploaded and now the process is pending. And I'm going to wait a little while, as is the case with all of these neural networks in the cloud. But once it's done, I get my bizarre psychedelic masterpiece in full color. Dreamify produces unique results that are distinct to deep dream imagery. Find Dreamify in the Play Store for free right now. So I'm guessing if you've been paying close attention to your social streams the past week or two, you've seen quite a few examples of how Prisma and other apps like it are the app trend of the minute. Just a hunch, but I'm guessing that's going to die down in a few weeks' time. It just seems to be the way these things go nowadays. Now up next, well, what do you know? Another app trend that appears to be slowing, at least slightly, maybe not rapidly, but I'm hearing a tad less about this game uh, than I was at least when I took off for the mountains. So here's my belated take on this week's big app. All right. This is one of those reviews where I know I'm only going to sort of get it right because when it comes to Pokemon, y'all are way more into it than I am, which is not to say that I haven't enjoyed playing Pokemon Go. There's just little I can do about the fact that I simply don't have much time to invest in it. But Here's what I do know. Think of this as a noob's review of Pokemon Go. Here I am on a map. This is of Petaluma. I'm followed in real time on this map as I walk around in search for a little Pokemon, wherever they happen to be. You never know where or when you're going to find them. Though down here is a nice little indicator that there are, in fact, some to be found around me, so that's good. Now, if a Pokemon appears, I just tap that, and then I proceed to hurl Pokeballs at it trying to hit the Pokemon in the process. That's what you need to do. And if I could do that successfully, I've captured it, and it's now a part of my Pokedex. I can sweep the map to see a number of different Pokestops. Basically, those are notable places that surround me wherever I happen to be. Going to a Pokestop not only shows you something cool in real life when you actually use your eyeballs, but also gives you prizes inside the app when you swipe the picture. Things like Pokeballs that you can throw at other Pokemon, uh, eggs to hatch new Pokemon, and other neat things that I haven't figured out yet. But here are the Pokemon I've caught so far. Uh, quite a few. I haven't quite reached 250 yet, but I told you that I've been playing them. That's a pretty big number. Don't ask me which ones I should be most excited about, though, if you do actually know, email me at arena at twit.tv so I can brag to other people who know more than I do about it. I'm now level six, which one thing I know for sure is better than level five. And those levels only happen as you encounter more Pokemon and explore more area. At level five, I was able to choose a team. Most of Twit appears to be on the red team, Team Valor. So who am I to rock the boat? Looking out at the map again, you see those big grandiose towers off in the distance. Those are gyms. 
Take your lazy butt to that location in real life, and you can challenge other players' Pokemon. And if there are enough of you, you can overtake a gym and make it your team's gym, which is good, apparently. I haven't done that myself. Honestly, Pokemon Go is fun. I really didn't expect to enjoy it as much as I have, but I can't help but feel like I'm not enjoying it as much as I could if I only had the time to walk around town with my phone. But I totally get the appeal. Hurry up and catch Pokemon Go before the fad settles down ever so slightly. It's free in the Play Store. Okay, I know I sound like the old guy trying to understand the whippersnappers, but give me a break. I really did my best with what I had, and now it's time for me to get back to what I know best, the legendary game of Ball and Cup. You really never know where that crazy ball is going to go. Send me your favorite apps and categories to arena at twit.tv, or you can post those to the subreddit at androidapparena.reddit.com and share them with me there and the rest of the world. The show plays live every Wednesday around 5 p.m. Pacific, following Tech News Today at twit.tv slash live, and a new episode will appear later in the evening in the feeds and on the show page at twit.tv slash arena. All right, that's it, folks. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Jason Howell, and I'll see you next week in the arena.